So we're starting 2024 in a really interesting environment for the property market. We had a lot of interest rate increases uh, in 2023. And then towards the end of the year, things started to slow down, but we got hit with another hike. Uh, we got hit with an interest rate hike late in the year, and we're still trying to figure out the impact of that hike and where the market goes this year. What's clear is that the U.S. is about six to nine months ahead of us. Uh, the U.S. is ahead because they increased harder, and now they're starting to see inflation come back, and they're probably going to start cutting sooner than us. We'll leave that towards the end where I'll talk a little bit about when I think interest rates will move in Australia. But what I want to do is I want to start the year fresh and I want to point out two things this week that came out that are really important to watch, really important trends. And I think this is the kind of data that's going to be really important to watch in for us to determine what the RBA does. And obviously what the RBA does is going to impact what happens to the real estate market. Nationally, of course, some markets are going to be stronger than others. But what we're doing in this analysis is we're looking for the direction of interest rates, which drives real estate prices. So this week, a bit of interesting data came out. First off, retail trade came out. And I've done a previous video uh, towards the end of last year where I pointed out that retail trade had softened. Um, it was a soft number in October. Uh, retail sales came down and I said, I don't really like looking at retail sales numbers in isolation because they do move around a lot. And we saw that happen. So retail sales actually bounced. Uh, the number that I look for is a seasonally adjusted number. Um, and in November, uh, they did bounce back quite hard, 2%. Um, now on face value, that looks quite strong. But there's a couple of elements that I think uh, explain this number. And I think we need to look through and kind of understand these elements into how retail sales can chop around month to month. First of all, Black Friday sales were uh, longer than expected. So what we've been seeing over the past few years is Black Friday sales are actually extending. Um, and what I need to see is how that impacts Christmas retail spending. So my assumption is that no, a November bounce, we've got that here 2%, but I think December will actually suffer. If you're going to extend Black Friday sales um, in November, you're probably going to pay the price uh, in December. If not, it means that the consumer is super, super strong, uh, but I doubt it. So I'm going to have to wait to see what happens in December, but I think we need to point out that the consumer is still spending um, and Black Friday had an element. The second element is migration. We've had a huge chunk of migration over the past 12 months. And that migration is impacting retail sales, no doubt. So when you take into consideration, one, that prices have gone up because of inflation, two, more people in the country, and three, uh, a longer Black Friday sales period, I think that makes the November numbers look better than probably what they are. Again, I need to see December, um, but I suspect that December softens. We get that number early uh, in Feb, uh, and I think that's going to play to the RBA's thinking because they, they really want to see where the consumer is. They want to see how spending patterns have been impacted. They want to kind of see if people are starting to slow down. Employment's still strong. Um, even though the unemployment rate did increase slightly, but it's still strong. The jobs market is still strong. So I think retail sales will need to watch it over the next few months. But there was a bounce in November and on face value, it looks good. But we've got to dig under the bonnet. So the second thing that came out this week is actually the inflation data. Now, this is the monthly indicator that comes out. It's not kind of the official quarterly inflation but it's really important because it shows us what's happening with the trend. And some good news here. Um, this is really reaffirming more than retail sales, what I'm thinking and what I'm kind of seeing in the market. And that shows that um, CPI actually continues to come down. So the way inflation is measured is if we're looking at November, we're comparing it to November in the previous year, right? So November 2023 
compared to November 2022. So what that shows is that the inflation rate has actually fallen again. We went from about 4.9%, uh, which was already starting to dip below 5%, to 4.3%. We're not far off the 2 to 3% target band range. We're not there yet. But if I look at what's happening in the US, I'm, I'm starting to see that we're following in a very similar path to the US. And again, remember, they're ahead of us six to nine months. And their inflation rate it now has a three in front of it. And the market's already starting to price in six rate cuts in the United States. So the RBA is going to be really encouraged. I think this is the key number that they're watching. And they're starting to see inflation uh, coming down. Still too high, but it's trending in the right direction. You can't switch this. You can't stop inflation overnight. It takes time. It takes probably six to 12 months from each rate uh, movement for it to flow through into the market. If we have a look at the categories, most of them have fallen. There's some areas that uh, inflation is rising. Uh, food is quite sticky. Um, it's not really falling. I mean, we were at 6.8%, 6.2, back to 6.6. Food sticky. Um, tobacco, obviously, there's more taxation there. The biggest areas that I think that are problematic for inflation uh, are around housing, uh, rents, they're not coming down um, and they need to start coming down. Electricity, gas, utilities, transport, these things are really sticky and these things are driven by demand. So I think what happens over the next six months is as the economy slows, as um, consumption starts to moderate, there will be less pressure on these factors. Rents, unfortunately, I don't think they get addressed. I think at some point rents rise too hard, too strong, and they plateau. So this rent rental increases, I think will come down, but we're not building anywhere near enough housing uh, for that to happen. And unfortunately, that's going to be sticky. So we need to see, you know, those areas, those components of inflation really um, start to moderate. Uh, start to flatten before you get inflation down to a two or a three. I think if we can get those things in order, it happens. But the problem with interest rates is that every time you put rates up, and we saw that last year, house prices go up, rents go up, and it actually makes inflation worse. So the good news is that inflation is no longer kicking like it was. And there needs to be, you know, some more time. We need to give it some more time. Uh, for these things to start to moderate, but it's starting to head in the right direction. The trimmed mean is a really important number. It's at 4.6. Um, it was down from 5.3. I think we'll see the trim mean in the high threes over the next two to three months. I think around March, April, you start to see inflation, you know, with a high three in front of it. And I think mid-year, the RBA starts to get a little bit nervous because they've pushed too hard. Um, Unemployment's going to be rising. The economy has been held up by migration, and that's that. That can only those numbers can only be fluffed up by so much. Um, and I think the RBA watching the US starts to change its narrative. I don't know whether it's June or September, but I think it's in the second half of next year, third or fourth quarter. Sorry, this year. Um, 2024, uh, I'm finding it a bit difficult to adjust to already in a new year. But, you know, uh, June to September this year, the RBA starts to change. The inflation data is nowhere near what it was um, in early 2023. And, yeah, the game starts to change. Property, I think the next few months are a slog. Um, I think the single most important thing that's going to impact prices is supply. There's no supply. Even if you have a look at dwelling approvals, which I'll touch on next week, they're, they're all apartments, you know, and apartment approvals uh, come and go. But I'm not seeing anything that is threatening the supply pipeline, uh, the property supply pipeline. And we're seeing it, you know, you're seeing it in the inflation numbers. Uh, if there was any meaningful supply starting to come through, you wouldn't get continued inflation in rents. Um, and in dwelling prices when interest rates are rising. So guys, that is my summary for the opening week uh, of 2024. 
we're in a really interesting position where the data is just starting to change for us. Inflation continues to come down. Retail sales are wobbling here and there, but things are gradually going to start changing and investors in the property market are going to start getting a sniff over the next couple of months that the chance of rate cuts this year is real. It's not just a theory, but it goes from being a theory to a possibility to a probability. And I think as an investor, you always need to be looking forward. If you're new to my channel, if you haven't watched one of these things before, um, I've been publishing research like this over the past six or seven years. Um, you can subscribe, peteresher.com. Uh, you can subscribe for weekly updates. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube. And um, I do shorter, quicker updates um, throughout the week on the news as it breaks on TikTok, Facebook, Insta, wherever you can find short format, also on YouTube. So thanks so much. Happy investing this year. And I look forward to bringing you more data and more analysis as it breaks.